We are home to every metal and critical mineral essential to net zero. And we own a proven track record as a reliable producer and exporter of energy and resources. So much of the history of the Hunter speaks proudly to that. But I don't want extraction to be the limit of our ambitions. I talk about Australia as a renewable energy superpower because that's the truly global scale of the opportunity. And government has to be a partner in this, not just an observer. One, two, One, two three, three, go <laughs> Anthony Albanese went to Newcastle last week to deliver a message that should have resonated with a city whose history has been shaped by coal mining and for a long time by steel making. Things changed dramatically for Newcastle in 1997 when BHP announced it was planning to close its massive steelworks. Can you look the workers and families of Newcastle in the eye and tell them the truth that your government is unable to deliver them hope or job security? We don't promise uh, a capacity to reverse Member the decision Hopper. that's been taken by BHP any more than if you had been in government, you would have acted any differently. Fast forward almost 30 years, and the current Prime Minister is talking about a renaissance for Newcastle and the Hunter Valley as part of Australia's energy future. 50 years ago, the Liddell Power Station was brand new, and it was the most powerful generating station in Australia. Today, the future of that site lies in renewable energy. The growth in Australia's renewable energy capacity in recent years has been staggering. Renewables now supply around one third of the nation's electricity generation. But the debate is now not just about producing this cheaper and greener energy for the Australian economy, or even about reducing greenhouse gas emissions. It's not just about exporting energy, but about manufacturing things here, the sort of heavy industry that has been so much a part of Newcastle and the Hunter's history. The economics at the moment is that it probably makes sense to export the iron ore, the coal and the gas. But in the net zero world, the economics completely flip. The economic thing to do is to make the green iron in Australia. You need to make the green iron close to where the renewable energy and the hydrogen is. They're very hard to export. They're very expensive to export. Rod Sims is a former senior economic bureaucrat who advised governments on both sides of the political fence for decades. He went on to be a chair of the Competition Authority, where he took a particular interest in energy markets. Professor Ross Garneau was at the centre of the debate about an emissions trading scheme at the start of the century. The big thing that's changed since those uh, early days was uh, increased understanding uh, that Australia has big advantages in the zero carbon economy from supplying uh, zero carbon goods that other countries can't supply for themselves. Last year, the Albanese government quadrupled the size of a scheme designed to underwrite projects which increase renewable and dispatchable energy for the domestic market, the so-called Capacity Investment Scheme. But there is a second, much bigger, international market for our renewable energy. Though it is physically very difficult to export many of the forms of renewable energy we can produce. That's why Ross Garno and Rod Sims are leading a push which would see Australia embed its renewable energy in products before they are shipped offshore. The big export markets at the moment and over the next few years will be in Europe and Northeast Asia, uh, Northeast Asia, uh, Japan, Korea, China. Uh, these countries account for over 40% of global emissions. They don't have the renewable energy resources themselves to get rid of their own uh, emissions. A variety of market interventions elsewhere in the world is increasing the pressure on Australia to seize this opportunity. China has been undertaking massive investment in renewables for some time. The United States, after issuing an emissions trading scheme, has set up a regime under President Biden of enormous subsidies under what is known as the Inflation Reduction Act. We're talking about a trillion dollars or more of government capital and budget stimulus to subsidise the investments and deployment of zero emissions alternatives. And in two years' time, 2026, Europe will also be introducing policies that further accelerate the push to net zero, with a policy known as the Carbon Border Adjustment Mechanism, which would work in conjunction with the EU's emissions trading scheme. 
Quite understandably, the European Union heavy industry has said if they have to wear a carbon emissions tax, then any imports into Europe should have a similar impost on them. It's tremendously important if we were to export clean green iron into Europe, we would not pay taxes, whereas fossil fuel made iron would pay taxes and on current European uh, prices or current European taxing rates, uh, green iron would be cheaper than fossil fuel made iron. We don't have to go dollar for dollar in our spending, but we can go toe to toe on the quality and impact of our policies. Ross Garno and Rod Sims argue there needs to be a ramp up investment scheme similar to the one taking place for domestic renewable energy and controversially are suggesting a levy on all fossil fuels to help fund both that investment and also by a reduction in average Australians' cost of living. If it's imposed at the full European carbon price, it raises about $100 billion a year. That's more than enough money to pay for the infrastructure that we think uh, the government should provide, and it will still have a lot of money left over to fund a significant package to lower the cost of living. For now, Garno and Sims recognise there is little prospect of either side of politics taking up the idea of a new fossil fuel tax. The government might be talking the same sort of language as Garno and Sims, but is a long way from endorsing their proposals. But the two veteran economists at least want to start a debate about the opportunities that are out there. In Australia, we're, we're not used to being bold in grabbing opportunity, or at least today we're not used to it. <laughs>